everyone, my name is Elizabeth, your friendly neighborhood introvert and founder and creator of Skein of a Different Color, and welcome to my February 1st Friday podcast. Yeah, so I have been on hiatus pretty much since the second week or so of January, and it wasn't a planned hiatus by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, it was completely unexpected even for me. But essentially what ended up happening was that my husband and I were out on a date and we were just about to leave our neighborhood when we heard a couple of gunshots going off. And that just really put me into a different frame of mind to where I was feeling incredibly unsafe, uh, especially seeing as it was in our neighborhood kind of a thing where it happened and that really forced me to take a step back, take some time to recover because I was not able to enjoy the rest of the day whatsoever. And it took quite a few days for me to stop shaking, like actually physically shaking from the experience. And yeah, so after I get through some formalities, I will be sure to talk a little bit more about that. So let me just go ahead and start off start off with a stash update as you know I haven't been doing my stash up Saturdays so we actually went to Port, ha Port Townsend here in Washington State not too long ago it was the kids a first time on a ferry and they were perfection they weren't running around being all crazy or anything like that which was amazing oh my gosh because as a mom especially seeing as it was their first time on a ferry I had like all the worst cases and it was going on in my mind obviously and so I was really happy that they did actually play out in real life so that was definitely something that I was really happy about but I of course I did hit up a couple of yarn shops so the first place that I hit up was Bazaar Girls if I recall correctly and I got this Ba Yarn Sonoma which is 100% superwash merino wool 234 yards, artisan, hand dyed in America, exclusively spun for that in the colorway, my gal, absolutely beautiful colors. I love the yellows and a little bit of the blush pinks and this will be so fun to work up into whatever it is that I choose. I just decided to get two skeins from there because we were a little bit on a budget. So there's that, let me just put it right here as I talk about it. And then I also hit up a yarn store called Diva Yarn and I got this beautiful yarn right here in the colorway Gray Sunrise. This is from Plymouth Yarn in their Equinox line, which is a 65% extra fine merino, 20% linen, and 15% mulberry silk. All it's missing is the cotton and it would be like a perfect blend of all my favorite fibers, but there we are, absolutely stunning and I love the colors. It's gonna be so awesome to work up into whatever it is I work it up into, of course. And then just some regular yarn that I still have in my stash. I still have my Farmer Daughter's Fiber in colorway Dirty Little Dandelion. And then moving right along, I'm just gonna like put my leg over here. Yes, I'm wearing pajama pants because you know what? It's a Saturday when I'm filming this, so mama gets to wear sweatpants. But anyway, um, and then from Lynn's Fine Yarn, we have the Caramel Latte, still so beautiful and squishy. Ugh. When I work it up, I might need like a little bit of time to myself because that is so sumptuous and delicious. Oh my goodness. And then from Blue Sky Fibers, I have Extra Erin in Buttercream and then Still Waters right here, which is of course a 55% baby alpaca and 45% merino just beautiful colors and when i work this up it will be a stunner it's going to be super chunky and i can't wait to work it up into that project and then uh from great yarns i found an independent dyer and her name is really Roz, and 
Yeah, and it's in the colorway I'm thinking, and this is a 85% merino and a 15% Donegal Neps, which is the speckled. And those are just like really beautiful green, kind of like hints of blue and browns kind of color. And it is going to be absolutely fabulous when I work it up. I'm actually thinking of making that into like a hood because, you know, I'm thinking head, thoughts, you know, that whole shebang. And then I also have this Fiber Natura in Kingston Tweed, which is 50% wool, 25% alpaca, 25% mixed fiber. And I got this from Apple Yarns, I think it was. Yeah, and I made sure to keep it up to my face so that I could make sure that I actually like it. And so the top two green ones are in the colorway olive, olivine, and the bottom blue color is in Azurite. So absolutely gorgeous yarns. And then last but certainly not least, I have my Malabrigo Dos Tierras in the colorway Dryad. I just cannot wait to work this up, but I'm kind of holding off on that because I do have some projects that I've got going on right down here. So let me just put this right here so that I can talk about my works in progress. All right, so starting off with this bag, I am, <laughs> I'm actually working up a little bag. So I've just got this, um, I love this cotton from Hobby Lobby in the colorway, which one is this one? Serene Spa, and then I've got it in Antique Cream, this one right here. And then right here, I've got it in French Lilac, this beautiful purple color, and it is working up beautifully. And then when I'm ready to add the handle, it will be in this colorway parchment right there. Absolutely beautiful colors, especially when they all go together, as you can tell. So I just did a little bit of a circular bottom, and now I'm working up a granny style top for the body of the bag. And it's going to be really nice, and it'll be really awesome to put my Bible study materials in there just so that I can have that other bag ready to go for other things and of course the hook fell out and I actually need to put a stitch marker in this thing so that it doesn't fall apart so let me just find a stitch marker real quick because I got like loads of them hmm, I don't want to use those ones what about that I think I will use one of these beautiful stitch markers that way also when it comes time to add the handle i have them all ready to go these are just some polymer clay stitch markers i got from oh gosh where did i get it from i think i got it from a little box of crochet which i believe is discontinued but you know that's the way of the world a lot of crochet subscription boxes are becoming discontinued like knit crate my gosh i'm not really happy with about that but anyway, moving along, I do have my pie shawl from Fiber Spider that I'm making slow but steady progress on right here. It is getting so big and so heavy, but it is absolutely gorgeous. I love how the colors are playing really well together. And then as I showed you in the shorts, I do have a couple hanks of these of this color yarn in the colorway dark denim from the same line with the authentic hand-dyed tonal from Yarn Bee. Uh, so that I can make sure that it is big enough because I was about 160 grams short So I definitely needed to get some more yarn so that I could actually finish up the border and these colors will go excellently together and I cannot wait to actually finish that I'm about like 17 or 16 rows or rounds away from being done with that but it's like slow and steady and then I did end up having to undo my knitting project because I just could not get over how I had messed up on that one row. So I'm back at it again and it's a knit to knit back loop pearl knit to knit back loop pearl kind of a pattern and I just can't wait for this to be done but this will be one of my longer projects just because it is knitting and I'm getting kind of like reintegrated back into knitting in general so I cannot wait to see this completed but like I just said it is going to be kind of like a um a longer work in progress kind of like with my pie shawl but you know what that's perfectly fine because like I said 
one of my resolutions was to actually take time with my projects. But anyway, and then I have round wound up my yarn so that I some more yarn so that I can actually work up my I am the queen and sterling from it's not from great yarns, but whatever. Uh, so I can work up my I am the queen and sterling into a beautiful scarf or maybe like a head wrap or something along those lines. But yeah, that is all of the formalities out of the way. Let me just get the baskets out of the way real quick. Oh yeah, and then with my uh, winter silk, I made this beautiful little shawl. Not little, it's kind of like a scarf size, but it is beautiful. I love it. It's so squishy and cozy and it works really well under this um, jacket. That, not jacket, but hoodie, zip up hoodie that I'm wearing just so that I can have a little bit of extra warmth, but not too much warmth kind of a thing. So let's go ahead and get right on into where I have been. I've been here at home uh, managing all three kids and being a keeper here at home, like making sure that the home is being run smoothly and everything like that. But like I said, the leaving on a date and then hearing the gunshots just really put me into a different frame of mind to where I just had to honestly put everything on hold. Like I didn't crochet for a few days after that even and that's saying a lot. <laughs> um, and then I just realized that I was getting really burnt out here on YouTube which is something that can happen and does happen a lot more frequently than YouTubers are willing to admit. And I was honestly feeling really burnt out with the three shorts a week in addition to the Stecklefinch Studios yarn, uh, which I actually worked up January's project just like that. Where is it? Oh my goodness gracious. So yeah, I already worked up January's project into this beautiful spring shawl slash scarf from Hooked by Robin. And I didn't do any tasseling or any of the Pico edging, but that's okay. It's just still really pretty. And this will be like a perfect complimentary, complimentary item to my spring wardrobe. And I cannot wait for spring, honestly, which is kind of funny because I don't like spring typically. <laughs> but getting on a tangent, um... And so I really just had to take a step back and reevaluate everything that I was doing. Um, and, you know, I did say what to expect, the Crochet Myth Mondays, but let me just be honest. I am finding it very difficult to find other crochet myths beyond the nine that I already have. And I just felt like I was making stuff up at the end of it. And so the Crochet Myth Mondays are something that probably will not be happening anymore. Uh, moving forward just because, you know, like I said, it's kind of difficult to try to find crochet mids that don't sound like I'm just pulling them out of thin air. <laughs> and so the Crochet Myth Mondays are something that is going to be going away uh, for the foreseeable future until I find more mids to do on. And I think that's something that I actually need to do a better job of is like when I see a myth, then I can address it. But and stuff like that but you know that's just me you know thinking out loud kind of a thing but as far as right now um I don't believe that I will be doing the crochet myth Mondays anymore uh for the foreseeable future just because like I said I feel like I've just been pulling them out of thin air kind of a thing and then uh with the whip Wednesday I do still like that because it was definitely a way for me to hold myself accountable to what it was that I'm actually working on and and then in addition to the stash up Saturdays it was holding me accountable to not having any more than 25 hanks of yarn unwound and so I really do appreciate having those other two segments and then of course the first Friday podcast which is what I'm doing right now and then my Speckle Finch Studios and then oh gosh I was counting on Malabrigo but then Nick Crate decided to cut everything off actually what is end up have being revealed is that it was the creditors who really like shut all that down kind of like a cease and desist kind of a thing it wasn't really knit crate just like pulling us a dirty they really don't have any control over it right now um so a little bit of an update on that but anyway um and then also my husband is going back to school is at school full-time in addition to doing full-time work and so i was definitely stretched very thin and it wasn't that bad when he was going to school uh, a quarter ago because they go by quarters at the place that he's going. 
And so the first score that he was doing was good. It was fine. I could still sit down and film. I could still do the crochet um, shorts that I was doing. But in addition to uh, a bunch of other stuff like, you know, the shooting and then me going on hiatus and then, of course, being burnt out from Christmas time in general because I was working so hard to finish my husband's vest. Like, I was pumping, pumping, pumping. And then later on, I was realizing that I just need a break. And so that's what all of that was. And so all that being said, I am still going to be doing the whip Wednesdays and stash up Saturdays uh, just to kind of free up this first Friday podcast kind of a thing. Um, but then in March, I don't know exactly what things will look like, uh, especially seeing as it's getting closer to the time that my husband will be graduating with his, um, with his technical degree, whatever the heck it is. I honestly don't know what it's called right now because mama has been off coffee. That's another update. I have been converted, I guess you could say, to being a tea drinker. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that there's just been something going on with my stomach lately to where coffee literally makes me nauseous. It might be the breastfeeding. It might be my crazy hormones because I haven't gotten back onto like a regular rhythm, if you know what I mean. Um, I haven't gotten on a back on a regular rhythm yet. And so everything is just like really topsy turvy with my hormones right now. And so I'm trying my best to make sure that I don't overdo it. And at the same time, I'm not just like lazing around or anything like that. And so there has definitely just been a lot going on, but in regards to the hiatus and where I have been, I've just been here working on projects, frogging projects, kind of a thing. Um, and I, yeah, it definitely made me take a step back and really reevaluate where I was going, not just as like a YouTuber, but then also as a wife and mother. And funnily enough, even though I am wearing my mama bear, um, pajama bottoms today and this hoodie, I have actually been stepping into my femininity in a way that kind of surprises me. Uh, like where throughout the day I will actually be wearing dresses or skirts. Like pants, they hurt. Like the high-waisted pants, they really hurt because I do have diastasis recti. And so I just have been dealing with that, doing some exercises and at-home physical therapy to try to re uh, rectify that. <laughs> rectify, rectify. <laughs> but anyway, um, and so there, like I said, there's just been a lot going on here on the home front and I haven't really been able to focus that much more attention to this uh, YouTube channel in general, but I am still really happy to see the positive feedback that I have been getting, like in regards to the likes, the watch time, the new subscribers and everything like that. I definitely appreciate y'alls. Um, and if you have any words of, of encouragement for hitting walls, like creative walls or even being burnt out, that would be greatly appreciated for sure. Um, and then beyond that, I'm just still going to be here doing my first Friday podcast, doing my whip Wednesdays, my stash up Saturdays. And whenever I do have a yarn haul, probably do like a little bit of a shorts kind of a thing, you know, because the shorts seems to be the way of the world right now, especially on like digital platforms like this, like YouTube or even Facebook watch with the reels and everything like that. So it's just really interesting seeing how the culture and everything like that has been changing here on YouTube, on Facebook, and everywhere else. You know, I'm not on TikTok. I'm not on Instagram. YouTube and Facebook are it as far as my uh, platforms are concerned. And so, yep, that's just basically all that I wanted to pop, excuse me, pop on here and say. And again, thank you so much for bearing with me as I took this impromptu hiatus and I cannot wait to actually finish my pie shawl. Like I said, I have like 16 rows left to do or so and I cannot wait to actually finish it because then I could wear it, display it and things like that. But anyway, before this video gets too terribly long, let me just remind you that I will be doing my Speckled Finch Studios unboxing. And then I do have a yarn of the month video coming out in 
sometime this month. I can't remember where I scheduled it, but yeah, I still have my yarn of the month. And yeah, that's about all that I have to say in this video. Thank you so much for sticking with me and bearing with me as we, as I kind of figure out this thing in general. I mean, I know that I had like my what to expect and then everything like that all written out, but you know, sometimes you have to reevaluate and readjust kind of a thing. And I'm really thankful that I have supportive people like Linda from the Old Line Fiber podcast slash Marilyn Cotton Co. My parents, my husband, my children to an extent, and everybody like that. And of course, you guys who are watching, liking, subscribing, and everything like that. But let me just go ahead and pop off here before this video gets too long. Once again, my name is Elizabeth, your friendly neighborhood introvert and founder and creator of Skein of a Different Color. And I'll see y'all later. Bye!